In Essex, three-year-old Theo is focused on the serious business of play. His mum, Jess, is focused on trying to keep him warm, wrapping him up in layers against the cold. I mean, my heating bills have increased massively, massively this year. I mean, this time last year, we were looking about 100 to 150 pound a month for gas and electricity. And this year, that's around 280 pounds to 340 pounds a month. And that's just completely unaffordable. I'm having to regularly choose between heating and eating. Um, this week, I chose to try and put some money on the gas. And that means we'll be going to the food bank on Monday because we, we genuinely cannot afford food as well. I currently have 33p in my bank. I, I can't buy any food with that. Theo has asthma. One of the triggers is cold weather. Over the summer, Jess said he needed his inhaler less than once or twice a week. Now, with the heating off, it's seven or eight times a night as he wakes up coughing. He's not sleeping. He's not got enough energy the next day. You know, he's not making it through a day without dropping off to sleep. And he's nearly four. That's not our normal. It breaks me because my child should be able to breathe. Um, my child should be able to have a warm home. And the fact that I can't provide that, I feel like I'm failing my child and there's nothing I can do to change it. Asthma isn't the only condition made worse by the cold. Research has linked low temperatures to raised blood pressures and a higher risk of strokes and heart attacks, as well as the exacerbation of existing conditions like diabetes and even dementia. Every year there are more deaths in the winter than there are in the summer, and some estimates are that up to 10% of those excess winter deaths can be directly attributable to fuel poverty. So I work in a fairly deprived area in Liverpool um, and uh, we're seeing significant numbers of people who have um, poor health because of poor housing, um, particularly um, especially as the weather's getting colder. Naomi and her colleagues treat the illness, but they also get asked to write letters to support requests for better housing conditions in cases where patients' health is being directly affected. In previous years, we might be asked to maybe write one or two letters to support housing, whereas we've seen a massive increase recently. It's been a tenfold increase within the practice. We've been asked, just in the last three months alone, we've been asked to write over 10 letters. The chair of the Health and Social Care Select Committee said, while on the move today, it's about to focus on the relationship between homes and health. People forget that the original health service was actually the health and housing department. And housing, poor housing, cold housing, damp housing, as we've seen recently in a, in a very tragic case of the little boy who passed away, is a major driver of poor health. Money for heating isn't the only thing which determines how warm a home can be. The UK has some of the least energy efficient homes in Western Europe. Part of that is just that our housing stock is old. One in six homes in England and one in five in Wales were built before 1900. These tend to be less able to keep the heat in. All that means, while there are some patches of energy efficient housing, across the north, Wales and the southwest, many homes only achieve a band E efficiency. Government schemes, including grants, were at one point driving a significant amount of insulation projects. In 2012, though, the coalition announced a new system. Loans would fund improvements and be paid back through electricity bills. Installations slowed dramatically. Did that contribute to the current situation? No, there are lots of projects out there around uh, warmer homes, uh, especially where we're building new houses. Um, but not all of it is being followed up. Not often, it not always is being taken up. Uh, we need recognition from the very top of government that housing and health are two sides of the same coin. Poor housing drives poor health. In a statement, the Department for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy said, we understand this is a difficult time for families across the country. That's why we've acted quickly to provide support, including our energy price guarantee. We're also improving the energy efficiency of homes. Pasta. Is this pasta? Yeah. As winter sets in, yeah. families are figuring out how to live in cold yeah. homes. Is that an orange? Yeah. Oh. Their health impacted by the falling temperatures. Baby, socks. Yeah. Socks. Oh.